Do you know why you can't release it? Like a tour pro. Why amateurs struggle to get a release that allows them to hit the ball further, straighter, better strikes with their irons, more de-lofting, handle lean, all these things. And as I do more and more videos on this subject, I can see so many people tripping up with the idea of getting into these kind of impacts, and then in turn with a driver, similar kind of lining up impacts. And it's a lot to do with the understanding of how you release, how you let the club go or not on the way through, what you do with your wrists or don't do. Let's show you what I mean. So when we look into the amateur database that I've got from my Swing Catalyst plates here and the video capture, we see a common, common pattern that is not there when you look at world-class players. There's absolutely punishing strike, punishing angle of attack, club path, face angles, and definitely the ability to get some speed out of the release, some kind of real whack and hit down at the bottom to make sure you're maximizing what you put in. And what we see from the amateurs is this buckle release, this unextended lead wrist release, this hold on release. We see it time and time and time again, where when we look at tour pros, we simply don't see it. We see a release where the lead wrist is severely extending into a completely different position, which puts the head in a different position, puts the club forward in a different position, and allows them to create speed, power, direction, and strike. And this idea of coming through and holding on to these angles where the club is lower than the wrist for a long time, we see them coming through and the elbow is buckling, even all this lead arm is almost lining up with the club as it goes through compared to the Tour Pros, which are so much more spearing that glove through, extending that lead wrist, letting that club go on beyond them. And it's to do with many factors. And these ideas are going to work with your iron. They're going to work with your driver. And getting you to have a more Tour Pro-like release. It's just going to work with all clubs, wedges up to driver. And one of the main reasons why people just are never going to hit their driver straight is in here, which we'll come to as we get near the end of the video. So this is my lead wrist as a very neutral position, if you like, just kind of coming out from my arm and relating this to backswing ideas and downswing and release ideas, where this wrist is so we can have extension so what people would call cup so i extend it forwards or upwards here that's extension and you could have flexion which people would call bowed you know your dj position at the top and then that might be where you're trying to get on the way through handling those kind of ideas so if we can establish that extension flexion and what we're seeing from the world's best players is as they hit and certainly straight after, first parallels and beyond. So you imagine how long it takes to get from here to when clubs first parallel on the way through. It's a minuscule amount of times, but when they get around first parallel, their lead wrist is extremely extended. I know it blows your head, but it's extended. They've gone from some level of flexion to a little bit of extension subject to their matchups with their grips to hitting the ball with some level of extension or flexion, again, subject to their matchups. Yep, some are in extent, it's starting to extend at this point to loads of extension as they get to first parallel. Well, with the buckle release, the hold on release, we see less extension in lead wrist, almost holding on to this straighter angle, giving it these kind of follow through positions where we now need to see the body really start to shift and move forwards because nothing's happening in here. Now, a simple way to get this concept in your mind is to get a Frisbee or anything that you can throw like a Frisbee. So I've just got a dozen balls here. Tricks and soft fills, but any manufactured balls will do the job. It's the shape. <laughs> so I'm gonna throw these out in front of me like a Frisbee. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna put my lead wrist into flexion. So I'm gonna create lots of flexion with my lead wrist. And then as I come down, start turning my body, I'm gonna start going out of flexion and into lots of extension as quick as possible to get the release, to get the spin on this, to get it going like a helicopter through the air, to get that speed and momentum onto this box of balls to throw it out in front of me. And I'm doing the same ideas with the club. Even though I'm not in the throwing the box of balls in flexion with my lead wrist, I'm in less extension going into lots of extension. Now this gets complicated because the amount of wrist angles that you need for this to function is gonna differ for every one of you subject to how weak or strong your grip is, subject to how you move your hands. But the basic principles will be the same. 
If you're semi-extended on the way down, you're still going to go into lots of extension on the way through. If you're in Fletcher DJing on the way down, you're still going to go into extension on the way through. You're going to have a relationship of going from there to there, or a relationship of going from here to there. It's going to be going that way. But you can see from the amateurs, it's not. And I do this video, I've done it lots, and people say, oh, well, you're, that's just the recipe for flicking it at the bottom. No, it's absolutely not. When I'm in this position here, coming in to hit this ball, this handle is ahead of that head, and my wrist is extended. And it's now going aggressively into extension for that club to go on beyond to get into my follow through position, that kind of tall position that you see on the way through. This idea of holding on to this angle for hours as people try to control shaft leads is actually causing more of this, believe it or not, kind of the opposite. And that's where I see so many get stuck. So the, the Frisbee throw is a really good way of understanding and feeling that release at the bottom and we can get that onto the golf club, which we're gonna come to. Now, the next idea and feeling is really simple. Do this at home if you can, if you're watching. Stand up, get anything that resembles a club. You don't even need a club. You can pretend you've got one in your hand. Just put the club out in front of you, somewhere parallel to the ground. And then I want you just to turn and face your imaginary target with your body, hips and shoulders. And I've not really done anything in my wrist and I've not done anything in my arm. I've just turned and rotated that way. Then bring your head back to where the ball is. Bring your shoulders slightly back with it. Try and keep your hips there. Let your right foot be up. And just think about this position. Yep, yeah, you're looking at this position thinking, yeah, that looks like what tall players do. And then look at your lead wrist. It's completely extended. To get in this position, this lead wrist has to extend to allow that club to overtake and the toe end get up in the air and get the feeling of the face being worked. It is not being held onto, given those buckle finishes that we saw earlier. You're not holding on to these angles. You're getting them gone. And to get them gone, and I'm sure lots of you recognize these kind of images, that's what we see from good players. Look at my lead wrist. It's so extended. So how can we start working this idea into shots to make sure we're hitting target, getting the shapes you want and the strikes? Well, these drills are really simple and they're gonna help all of you. First idea is I want you to spear the target with the butt end of your club. So I'm gonna get my Arcos sensor here, basically to spear where I want the ball to go. So it's a bit of an exaggeration, but you can see my arc off sensor here is basically pointing at that stream in the net in front of me. I have tried to let that club extend out in front of me. My lead wrist has to extend to get this spearing action with the butt end of the club getting out towards that target. And to do that, yep, I need that wrist extending. Because lots of you, even if you do get that club spearing at the end, you're doing it very late, meaning that you're gonna be going more kind of these ways through, and then you start to put it in. I want you to try and feel that you're putting it in as early as possible from impact and onwards. And this is now where my language needs to be creative, because when you work with real students, not internet comments and stuff like that, you want it to be from around impact and onwards. And you can't pinpoint an exact point as much as some people want, because it's just so different to so many people. If you're someone who can't get this spear in time, you're always doing it late, then I'll say to you, if you're listening, and you can try this, this is where experimentation is the best, you need to do it as soon as you start downswing. As soon as you start pulling on the way down, you should be trying to feel like you're trying to get that club to overtake and spear. And if you do it too much, where you do start to get a little bit flippy at the bottom, I'll tell you to do it later. And that's the beauty of golfing uh, instruction. It's not about telling always people how to do it. These are concepts that you need to go away and practice. And I see that in the comments. Oh, you shouldn't do that because, you know, this happens. Well, it doesn't happen to everybody. And that's the beauty of coaching. Your language has to be creative. And hopefully as learners down that lens, you need to be creative. Experiment with these ideas. Chuck away the ones that don't work. Use the ones that do work. Same ideas with your driver. Hit your shots. Try and get that club spearing out to the target as you've hit it, really letting that club overtake and go at the end, getting that extension, getting that follow through position into this position where you are extending lead wrist. I like to do it with mini irons for most golfers. You can do it with the driver, but it's harder. That'll come in time because it's just easier for them to manipulate different feelings. And remember, we're talking about extending lead wrist on the way through into impact and on the way through. It's scary. They're thinking flipping and all those ideas. So do the medium iron to kick it off. 
next drill really works wonders for students is set yourself up to the ball and then I want you just to put your lead hand opposite your inner thigh have your lead wrist extended so it's starting to extend remember this way flexion extension and the club head about a foot in front of your lead foot now from here just pull that club over the ball and try and get back into that position it's going to really give you that preset feeling of that club being let go. When you do this idea, people definitely go, that's definitely flipping. Just watch this. So hopefully from this camera angle, you can see that my handle is ahead of the ball and the head. And what I'm gonna do is just pick this club up, same handle, lean forward. And then I'm just gonna bring my feet back to nearer this other camera here. And what you're gonna see is it's the same position, it's just gone beyond the angles of the camera. Yet when you put people in this position, and certainly when I make videos on this, people say, yeah, but that's the club flip forward. It's not, that handle is ahead of that head on the angle it's at. It's just that you've got a fixed camera on a 2D and we're in a three dimensional space moving around it, which is why this drill works so well for golfers, because it's pre-setting handle forwards with extension. It's doing it for them. Handle forwards, head forwards, hand opposite lead fight, extended wrist, bring it back, try and get in that position, let it rip. And the last idea, which leads on to other ideas, but it's a good starting point, is thinking about how this end relates to this end. So if you can get yourself, get flexion on that lead wrist and then extend it. So the same ideas with a golf shot. So doing a few little half swings where you just put it into like last parallel coming in to hit the shot. But what I want you to do is just really turn the club down to the ground, which is gonna put your wrist in deflection. And then from here, really extend it through. It's really gonna allow you to feel that club flicking forwards. Don't be afraid if you hit a few low hooks, few duffs, you're gonna hit some funny shots. For lots of people, that's really good because it's taking loads of loft off and again, encourages that little bit more handle lean. Handle lean still comes from extending that lead wrist, remember, a fraction into loads really early. And it's the same idea with the driver. Lots of people making the same issues holding on, so turning the club face down and trying to feel this preset impact all works with the driver. But one of the main reasons why you'll never hit the driver straight is in here with some other nuances because it's slightly different with the driver, which this video will continue this idea on and give you all the information you need to make sure you're ripping this one.